if we don't get Ron Paul in, it is over for this republic. I couldn't have said it better. And uh, I've been harking on that every single day, uh, trying to uh, help them raise the needed money that they need. I see in the first quarter the president raised something like $86 million. I mean, that's incredible. By the time the election comes, uh, what is he going to have? Uh, Three hundred million or something like that. Well, you know, I should tell you, I, I'm working. I'm trying to get a, a new video done, uh, which I think the title of which will be "Real Men Love Ron Paul." And uh, I, I just, I, I got to tell you, I was driving to work yesterday and I saw two Obama stickers right in in a row in traffic, parked right in front of me. And one of them said "Carpenters for Obama," and y you just can't make this stuff up. I mean, does that idiot driving that car not realize that it's Obama's Department of Justice that went in and raided Gibson Guitar and told the folks that they can't build the guitars here with that exotic wood, but they'd be welcome to have the guitars built out of the country and then import them? I mean, are people insane? Are people completely mad in this country that everybody, it should, Ron Paul should be leading these polls 90 percent you know but he should have 90 percent of the vote because anybody who can think must realize that everything else is a lie and the only person telling the truth about anything anymore is ron paul well three days before the election in iowa he was uh he had 50 percent plus and santorum uh goes from two percent to 24 and a half percent now i ask you statistically uh, anybody who's been to university and taking statistics knows that that is absolutely impossible. It's impossible. It's impossible. And, and the public stands there like um, a bunch of people with their thumbs in their mouths, uh, not knowing what to do and afraid to say anything. And the whole election in Iowa was fixed, and it was done by the Republican National Committee. And the same is true. In fact, I just got a union leader article out of New Hampshire this morning from one of my subscribers who is a state representative in the, in the, in the state of New Hampshire. And they're investigating. What will come of it, uh, I don't know. But I do know that they have films of these people giving out ballots to people for people who are already dead. Right. And and so in both instances, the, uh, the results were rigged. There's no question. And, you know, we saw this with the Bush administration. It, it wasn't blatant uh, with Obama when he had his election, but it was with Bush. If you remember, in Florida, they went to the Supreme Court, and the whole thing was whitewashed, and they, they controlled the Supreme Court. They did what they wanted to do was put that moron in office. Mm -hmm. And then after that, most people don't know about this, but the Bush people uh, sent their people down to PAN, P-A-N, in Mexico. And the, all their crews and everything. And they did the same thing there for Calderon. I mean, they were, they were so uncaring about what they did that there were ballots all over the the ground and in different sections of the country. They didn't even bother to take them and try to hide them in some surreptitious place. They just dumped them on the, on the ground. Yeah. So this is what you're dealing with. Uh, this is not just America. Uh, they're doing this in other countries. Uh, you know what was encouraging, though, about the New Hampshire vote is that Ron Paul finished a strong second despite the widespread use of the Diebold uh, voting machines in New Hampshire. I think 90% of the precincts had those crummy, easily hacked Diebold voting machines, and, uh, and, and he must have had a strong enough lead. He must have had a strong enough base in New Hampshire that they they couldn't even dumb it down below 23%, 24%, because that's where he finished, and it was a strong second. So that was really encouraging, I thought. Well, it was, and you and I would notice that, and others like us, but the public doesn't. you got to hammer away on it. And once we get the uh, results back from uh, New Hampshire, uh, and I don't think we're going to get anything out of Iowa, uh, the, the Republican National Committee covered everything up, and they pay people cash. So you, you, know, you know you can't uh, look for a check for uh, you know five grand for uh, uh, fixing an election. 
or 50 grand or whatever the uh, the number is. And so it's all cash. And uh, and so I, I think the moment for that is past. But I think what Ron Paul should do, my personal feeling, is go after the female vote in a big way. They love them. Women, uh, he really appeals to them for a whole bunch of reasons. And secondly, I think he should be more conf- con- con- confrontational. Um, n- uh, mentally act like a street fighter. Yeah. he. Has, I would have to give him some credit, though, on that front. I've really seen him sticking to the hardcore facts and the truth, which often is kind of like a punch to the face of the Romneys and the Gingriches of the world, because these guys are such, such uh, you know, frail men behind the curtain that it doesn't take much to appear that they're being attacked. Ron Paul speaks truth, and it seems like he's on the attack, when really all he's doing is pointing out that, you know, they're globalists who support carbon taxes, who support open borders, who support endless war, who support uh, Obama health care plan. Who, so he is on the attack, but that's typically because he's only speaking truth. Um, I, I, I don't know how to term it, but um, it's just like a fighter. Uh, you're in a boxing match, and you find out what you're doing isn't working. The match is even. You've got to change your tactics somewhat. And by looking like you're more con, uh, con, uh, confrontational. I, I don't know how to describe it, uh, I know how to do it, but um, I'm not in a position to do it. Uh, the the point is this, that that would help, I think, uh, because the more he leans on them and all the things they've been that are negative are really going to hurt them because there's nothing they can dig up on him. Uh, they've already tried uh, the racist thing, and they've already tried uh, anti-Jewish thing, uh, which is the first thing that comes out of the Southern Poverty Law Center and the ADL. Uh, and, um, and it didn't work. I mean, you know, Ron Paul is one of those people, uh, you could train him to be a racist or a Nazi, and, and it wouldn't take. Yeah, he's, he's a... Uh, he's it a, wouldn't take. It wouldn't take. You know, he'd say, I can't be one of you. Yeah, he's a modern day. Me, you know? He's a modern day Thomas Jefferson. Period. End of story. You know, there's a few litmus tests that we can look at. You know, to know you know who the truth tellers are, and you know who the people who you know who's being sincere and who's not. And the litmus tests are: Will you talk about the Federal Reserve criminal system? Will you talk about this new NDAA bill with S1867 that allows the frickin' military to arrest American citizens and throw them into a dungeon? Uh, and, and will you talk about Ron Paul being the only solution and the only candidate that deserves our attention and our support? Those are the three litmus tests. That's it. Most of them don't do that. Yeah. Well, yeah. Increasingly, I mean, I don't know. The any... only thing I stay away from is religion. Yeah. Yeah, me too. Because it's so complicated. I mean, you got 9,000 different Protestant uh, sects and and you got, you know, 15 or 20 Catholic, and on and on and on. And there's no way you can be right. Um, I think we covered a lot of good stuff. And uh, and I do appreciate your time, Bob. I really do. We all do. We Anytime appreciate it. you want. All right, buddy. Well, you have a good weekend. You too. All right, Bob. And uh, it was a very good program. Thank you, sir. Okay, bye-bye. Thanks, Bob. Bye-bye. Well, thanks for tuning in and visit SGT Report for all the latest on a daily basis. Thanks for watching. Good night.